So you guys made a comment in my comment section about how this guy called Ultimate Joker made a video saying that Spider-Man was objectively nerfed in the PS5 game, and you brought to my attention some of the dumb shit that was said in the video, so I didn't actually believe it could be that bad, but I'm going to be making a response video to that today. Now I do want to point out two things. Number one, please don't send any harassment over to the guy, like it's really in bad faith, and even though he portrays himself as being a very unlikable human being in his own video, Video. At the end of the day, you're just as bad if you send him hate, so don't do any of that, it's really unnecessary. Just enjoy this video and have a laugh. Peter got nerfed. You know the video is off to a great start when he shows an out of context montage of Peter getting his ass kicked, almost as if this is foreshadowing for him showing clips out of context for the entire video. Now, I know you've heard others say it before, whether it be videos or comments, but I've seen way too many special needs insomniac copers argue otherwise, so now I figure I'll articulate it in my usual, supreme, intelligent, objective fashion, and I'll later reference better Spider-Man media that handles it better. Referring to your audience in that way is something I could never imagine doing. I mean, seriously, what the fuck is this guy's problem? Just because people disagree with him on a topic, he refers to them in such a manner that is so demeaning. I said this in my past videos, but Moron still argued, so now I'll list off every single fight. Moron still ar- Dude, this guy just can't help himself. He has to insult everyone who disagrees with him at every given turn. But also, I'm very interested to see what points he's gonna bring up, because let's be honest, he's not gonna list every single thing. Because if he did, he'd have to list the evidence that contradicts his notion. Sandman. Now, I can excuse Spider-Man needing help to take out a giant version of Sandman similar to Spider-Man 3, sorta, and Spectacular Spider-Man where he doesn't really beat this big version of Sandman. But you know what these two Spider-Men are good enough not to do? They're good enough not to get folded via zipping right towards Sandman's face to punch him as if it would do anything. You can see in that clip he zips towards Sandman with Sandman being fast enough to react and swat him away like it's nothing. I don't see what the problem is, especially since this is the start of the fight. Halfway through the fight they realise raw power isn't working and they switch tactics, abusing his weakness to water and Miles' electricity. Why is this a problem? Only to get knocked down into the sand where Miles has to save him. Peter Parker also saves Miles from being Sandman's lunch later on in the fight, and technically he saves not just Miles, but potentially New York by coming up with a strategy to beat Sandman, so how is this a problem? This isn't his first fight with Sandman, by the way. It isn't his first fight against Sandman, however we're getting given very little context as to how that first Sandman fight went. Take Spider-Man 3 as a good example, we see that Sandman has different forms, with Peter doing much better against different forms than he would against his giant form for example, and logically the first version of Sandman would obviously be weaker, since one Spider-Man was able to beat him, whereas in the second game it took two Spider-Men to beat him. Kraven who has now become ridiculously overpowered and Spider-Man in under a minute. Thankfully he doesn't refer to Craven as a peak human male, which is something I've seen other people do. However, he doesn't explain why Craven is that freakishly strong. If you play as Peter during the mission where you infiltrate the party, Peter finds the substance that Craven uses which makes him freakishly strong. So, yeah. He's freakishly strong, I don't see what the problem is. Spectacular Spider-Man, he's a cross species similar to the lizard. I don't see what the problem is. This is a different adaptation of the character, they can do whatever they want with it. Harry later has to give Spider-Man the symbiote, so he doesn't die. He almost died to stupid shit like this. First of all, Harry doesn't give Peter the symbiote at all, the symbiote just bonds to Peter of its own free will. We see earlier in the story foreshadowing that the symbiote does actually want to be bonded to Peter, so no, this is just objectively incorrect. Second of all, getting stabbed with multiple internal organs being pierced is obviously going to be a killing blow, even if you're Spider-Man. I don't see what the problem is here, he doesn't regenerate like fucking Wolverine. Not to mention the dumb predictability of where this was all going. What the fuck are you talking about? The 10 minute PlayStation gameplay reveal revealed that Peter already has the symbiote in that gameplay section. Like, obviously he's gonna have the symbiote in this game. The only thing we didn't know is how he was going to get it. People have given some excuses like him not being ready for Kraven's enhanced strength, but even then, that shouldn't mean you instantly die to what's only an enhanced human. Oh, never mind, he actually is trying to lowball Craven, saying that he's only an enhanced human. Fucking Scorpion's an enhanced human, Rhino is. 
Is it suddenly bad that he loses fights against them too? Craven is so strong, he can 1v1 the symbiote empowered version of Peter, and he can even fight Venom to an extent. Is it really so hard to believe that he'd effortlessly overpower base Spider Man? Spider Man has strength that can stop trains and enhance speed, so. Maybe he shouldn't just pathetically die to an above average human. First of all, lifting strength doesn't matter when it comes to how hard you can actually throw a punch. Take characters like Silver Sable, for example, who are basically feetless when it comes to lifting strength, but they can ragdoll and knock out regular humans with a single blow. Like, that doesn't correlate. Spider Man should have been ready for him to be this tough anyway, since he already knew Kraven killed Scorpion. How exactly does that prove that Kraven is massively above Peter in any way and that he should not hold back against him? Peter himself can already fight Scorpion, like, and he holds back all the time, even against characters superior to Scorpion, such as Dark Orc, Hammerhead, and hell, you could even say Rhino to an extent. Like, this out of context video does not give him the information he needs. Scorpion, who's supposed to be a villain that's as strong and as fast as Spider Man. Gosh, the scaling of Craven being this overpower is just ridiculous. How is it ridiculous if it's consistent? Like, the guy fights symbiote-powered Spider-Man and does just fine, and he only really loses against Venom, debatably the strongest character in the entire verse. Again, this is an adaptation of the character, his power can be different to what it is in the comics. This really isn't a problem, you're just coping right now. But I already covered it in my last video. But anyway, let's give another better example yet again. Spectacular Spider-Man where Peter also gets his ass beat in under a minute. Not as ridiculously severe as Kraven, but his ass does get beat. The spectacular version of Tombstone is nowhere near as powerful as Kraven, so yeah, it would make sense that Peter doesn't get his ass handed to him as quickly as he does. And you can even argue that Insomniac Spider-Man is above Spectacular Spider-Man. I really don't care to argue that, but the point I'm making is just because two characters overpower a character, that doesn't make one weaker than the other. There's a lot more context that goes into it than that. Now, this scene actually makes sense because this is Spider-Man's very first time seeing Tombstone which justifies Spider-Man's mistake of underestimating him, unlike Kraven. At the time of the PS4 game, Peter has 8 years of experience under his belt, yet he still underestimates and holds back to an extent against Sinister Six members. I mean, take his fight against Shocker, he was literally taking the piss and he got punched through a bank vault door because of it. I really don't see what the problem is here. Although, if you had to hazard a guess, I would probably say he just hates Kraven because he's Russian. Like, I genuinely can't think of a better reason than that. Spider-Man obviously wouldn't expect some corrupt businessman to be this tough. Yeah, just like how he wouldn't expect a buff Russian guy with no armor to be that tough either. Just because you can beat Sinister Six members, that doesn't mean shit. Peter himself can beat Sinister Six members, it's really not that big of a deal. But anyway, despite that loss, Spider-Man later defeats Tombstone near the ending of the show, which is some hella great payoff that shows character progress, as opposed to Kraven where Spider-Man never beats this guy without the symbiote. And this is a problem why? This is a great moment in the story because not only does it reflect how far Peter has fallen that he's actually willing to kill someone, however it also impacts Venom's character arc since he is pissed at Kraven as he believes that Kraven was the reason why him and Peter were separated. This is not a bad m moment. Just because Peter quote unquote can't beat someone without the symbiote, it's really not a problem. We never see Kraven get overpowered by anything except the symbiote, so... We never see Kraven get overpowered by anything other than the symbiotes. Debatably the most powerful characters in the game. And you're wondering why base Spider-Man can't beat him? Therefore those shitty shorts have no real proof of Spider-Man being stronger. This is just objectively incorrect. Not only does he beat and have Kraven dead to rights, the same guy who killed him earlier in the story, however, Black Suit Spider-Man also broke free from a cage deemed unbreakable. Now, obviously, out of context, this would make him more powerful than the most powerful nuke ever detonated. However, in context, Kraven has extensive knowledge of not just him, but also his past villains, as he knows extensively how Spider-Man fights and the type of character he is, meaning that Symbiote Spider-Man is undeniably stronger than his past self. This is common sense. But yeah, speaking of the symbiote, later in the story, Peter fights a lizard and wins this fight, but it's with the symbiote and they make sure that you know he only wins this fight exclusively because of the symbiote when they have the symbiote heal him from a serious fight ending injury. 
against the lizard. Yeah, it's almost as if Peter getting a limb broken in a fight against a lizard should portray that lizard is significantly above most characters he's fought until that point. Although I would also like to point out Peter wasn't trying to beat the lizard by any means, he was trying to cure him, and Peter was holding back throughout that fight and effortlessly overpowered him. The only time that lizard actually posed any threat to him was either in raw strength or when his roar acted as sound waves which neutralized the symbiote temporarily. That is it. Other than that though, Symbiote Peter was whooping his ass. As opposed to other media that shows the black suit as something that makes things easier. Not something that's a crutch that he absolutely needs. This is just completely bad faith. In the PS4 game, Peter has no issues fighting supervillains with 14 broken bones. However, the distinction is what bones were actually broken. We don't actually know which ones were broken, however we do know that his entire left arm was fucked. Like, how exactly is he supposed to fight with an arm essentially in a sling? Like, that's just so... that's not a good equivalency at all. Let's look at an actual good symbiote story. Spider-Man Web of Shadows as a giga example. S.H.I.E.L.D. has a symbiote device that will kill every symbiote infecting the city without killing any of the hosts. This, of course, forces Spider-Man to give up his symbiote as well, so long as you choose a good ending at least. But plot twist, though, as Venom and a bunch of other symbiotes seem to have gotten onto the S.H.I.E.L.D. telecarrier. Spider-Man, like a true Giga Chad, goes off to fight all the symbiotes without the black suit, and even holds his own against a giant Venom symbiote monster. This is just completely irrelevant. As I stated, you're free to enjoy one version of the Spider-Man character, and if you prefer Web of Shadows to this game, no one is available to stop you. However, what is a problem is when you're saying, oh, X Spider-Man can do this and Y Peter can't, therefore Y Peter is somehow weaker. Like, no. There are some versions of Spider-Man that could take on multiversal threats. Are we going to try saying that Toby Spider-Man was nerfed because he can't do that? Let's start to get into Insomniac's various Spider-Man symbiote L's. In a Craven Jail tournament, Miles Morales defeats the murderer of his dad and his new arch nemesis, Mr. Negative. I wish Peter could have beat a villain on his own, but anyway, Miles frees Mr. Negative. What the fuck are you talking about? Peter with broken bones beat Mr. Negative in the fucking PS4 game. What do you mean? Also, I do want to point out that Miles was indeed weakened in this boss fight, since it is implied that the negative energy negatively affects Peter's, uh, not Peter's, it negatively affects Miles' abilities. I know that's a bit of a pun, but hey, it is what it is. So a weakened Peter took on Mr. Negative and won. A weakened Miles took on Mr. Negative and won, implying that both are significantly above Mr. Negative. This... It, this is just a nothing point. Peter goes to help Miles, who Craven has defeated and captured off screen, as can be shown by the hurt state of Miles. Miles has one loss, and Peter is at like five losses or near death experiences, but. Technically, if we include the PS4 game, Peter has broken the double digit mark when it comes to wins and losses, but who the fuck cares? He's Spider Man, he's not Kratos, it's completely fine for him to lose fights every once in a while. Like, just because the black guy won more fights than the white guy it doesn't make it a problem. Anyway, Peter fights Kraven and gets the win, but it seems to be portrayed as him only getting the win due to the Black Sea. Almost as if the symbiote version of himself is stronger than the ba base version. This guy just contradicts himself so many fucking times. Like, at first, like, symbiotes are the only characters that can pose a threat to Craven, but now he's baffled that the symbiote-empowered version of Peter beats Craven. Like, what the fuck is he doing? Also, I guess by this logic, Peter needing the anti-Ox suit to beat Otto Octavius in the first game also makes him nerf. Black Suit Spider-Man is about to take things too far by killing Craven, but Miles Morales somehow gets out of his cage in the short time they were fighting despite his hurt state. Miles is the same guy who can take on Rhino, and Rhino is the same guy who can destroy multiple city blocks without breaking a sweat. Is it really that hard to believe that a stronger Miles in a weakened state, I'll grant you that, but a stronger Miles nonetheless can break out of a cage? A cage that has gaps between the fucking bars? And this starts our boss fight where Symbio Peter somehow takes a hard L to Miles Morales, even though he was just hurt by Kraven, who he was originally captured by. 
Right, we can open the can of worms for the Peter vs. Miles fight. First of all, I've already broken it down in a previous video that Peter would have indeed beaten Miles if the scenario was different. However, I'll try not to repeat myself too much here. Essentially, both characters weren't at 100%. Peter had literally just fought Craven in addition to the Hunters, with Miles being fatigued as we see in the game, which he does address, credit where credit's due. Secondly, Miles is abusing his weakness to sound waves, which we see in the game how effective those are against him. Second, thirdly, I should say, Peter is conflicted as we see multiple times throughout the second half of the fight, meaning that he's not actually trying to beat Miles, and I would like to point out that they don't beat each other. Miles essentially knocks some sense into Peter, but that doesn't equate to beating him in a fight. By that logic, Peter beats Scream in a fight, which isn't true. They just, you know, it's like an emotional fight. Peter is amplified by the symbiote, and has just beat Craven without breaking too much of a sweat, but Miles, who just lost to Craven, somehow beat Spider-Man. Do you know what's more amazing than either of those things? The fact that you're showing the clips out of context and in the wrong order just to suit your narrative. You are completely right. Peter, with the symbiote, is massively above Miles, as we see in the first half of that fight where he's not conflicted, where he effortlessly overpowers Miles, and the only reason Miles breaks free is because of the bioelectricity. The clip that you are showing is in the second half of the fight where Peter is becoming more progressively concerned and conflicted, as evidenced by the dialogue here. Why are you doing this? I made you! You owe me! I know you don't mean that! All I wanted was to save everyone! MJ! May! Now this city thinks that I'm the problem! You think I'm the problem? But I'm not anymore! I'm the solution! I can't let this go! I'm finally everything everyone needs me to be! And what about MJ? You could have killed her! I know you're hurting Pete, but you're better than this! I know, I know, but... No. no. You are being dishonest, you are showing the clips out of context. This shit ain't mapping. I can possibly understand Miles Morales beating Peter, but Black Suit Peter? doesn't math. Yeah, you're right, it doesn't, which is why Miles had to abuse his weakness to sound waves and essentially break him out of the influence state just to win that fight, even if you want to say he won, which, I mean, he didn't knock Peter out or anything. Like, he's acting as though Miles was freaking Thanos and beat the Hulk into submission. Like, no, that's not at all what happened. Especially given the circumstances I just explained. So you explain the circumstances that go with your point, but you ignore the circumstances that go against your point. Okay, yeah. I, I, yeah, I see nothing wrong with this. But anyway, after Miles basically beats him, he convinces Peter to take off the black suit, which I find sort of destroys the whole beauty of how that arc usually plays out, that moment where Peter has an intense moment of self-reflection as he sees how the symbiote and his new ways of doing things are going too far and causing him to lose everyone. Miles Morales going as far as to say these things for him, as he beats his ass, sort of takes away from that. In literally every single Spider-Man media that I'm aware of, including some of the ones that you listed, Peter never beats the symbiote's influence by himself. In the main comics, animated series, and Spider-Man 3, he needs the sound waves from the bell in order to purge the symbiote from his system. In the Ultimate comics, he needs a large amount of electricity to help him. In the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon, not only does he need the bell, however he needs the guidance of Uncle Ben, just like how Peter needed sound waves and the guidance of Miles to beat the symbiote in this game. And also in the shitty 2017 show that no one cares about, Peter needed technology from Dr. Connors to remove the symbiote from his system. Peter never beats the symbiote without someone else's influence. Even in Web of Shadows that you mentioned, there is the shield technology which purges the symbiote from his system. I know that the context was different with that game. Your point is still invalid. I mean, like, I could rework it in a way that keeps the essence of Insomniac spin, but in a better way, where Black Suit Peter is winning despite Miles putting up a good fight or holding his own. You literally just described the first phase of the fucking boss fight. What are you talking about? But then as he's winning, he's getting close to being too brutal towards Miles, who's one of the most important people to him. He stops and catches himself and makes the changes accordingly and takes off the black suit as he sees the monster he's becoming, a tad bit similar to BBS, but 
No. The symbiote owls don't stop, though. Right, once again he's conveniently ignoring the conflicted state that Peter is in, even the massive rant that he gives to Miles midway through the fight about how he needs the suit. Essentially, Peter's state is all over the fucking place right now. His mental state is fucked. Just listen to this. Like, Peter 100% believes that he needs the suit as a crutch, and due to his repeated failures, he has lost confidence in himself and believes that he is incapable of being a good Spider-Man without the suit. Why would he want to give that all up? He essentially is forced to give it up by Miles, because he Miles recognises just how far gone Peter potentially will become if he doesn't get rid of the suit here and now. Miles has watched Peter nearly kill Craven. He nearly broke the rule that Spider-Man has where he does not kill. Like, I, I don't see what the problem is here. Even when the symbiote is in a jar, Peter brings the symbiote back to Oscorp. But not to give it to Sick Harry who needs it, but to destroy it due to what it can't do. A Sick Harry who can barely walk somehow proceeds to hit the canister and Spider-Man just loses his superhuman reflexes and just Let's it happen. I will admit that this is pretty dumb, and I think they should have reworked this part of the story to where, I don't know, P Peter puts it in stasis, kind of like spectacular, but then Harry breaks it out and, you know, bonds with it that way. However, at the same time, Peter is not going to be going all out against his sick best friend, who can't even walk without a fucking cane. Like, what are you on about? I'm not even going to talk about the 82 ways you could have wrote that better. Just goggle at this amazing Spider-Man footage. Yeah, the same amazing Spider-Man footage where he's dealing with a bully. Like, how the fuck does that correlate? <laughs> like the whole symbiote invasion is about to start because Spider-Man couldn't dodge hits from a cripple. First of all, the entire symbiote takeover, it happens literally after Harry becomes Venom. Peter has no knowledge of the repercussions that would happen if P Harry rebonds with the symbiote. You're acting as though Peter knew that this catastrophic event would take place, yet he still let the canister break free. Like, do you really think Peter would have been that careless if he knew that the world was potentially at stake? But anyway, after Harry becomes Eddie Brock's character, Spidey gets thrown into a bunch of boxes and he's out of the fight as Venom goes on a rampage and fights Kraven, who ends up putting up more of a fight than Spider-Man. Almost as if Kraven is more powerful than base Spider-Man, the same guy who fought the symbiote-empowered version of Peter and did just fine. What have you got against Russians? This is the first Kraven ever who didn't lose to a normal Spider-Man. What exactly are you trying to prove with all of these false equivalencies? Like, Tom Holland's Spider-Man is the first time we get a live-action Spider-Man who is given the Iron Spider suit by Tony Stark. Like, and you're trying to say that that makes him worse than the, like, other live-action Spider-Man because that happens and it didn't happen with them. This is fiction. It's an adaptation of a character. They can do whatever the fuck they want with it. Why is it a problem? If they kept him around, maybe Insomniac would have had Kraven fight Thanos. They seem to treat Kraven like more of a hero than Spider-Man for some odd reason. But anyway, throughout all the chaos in the city caused by Venom's symbiotes, Venom later shows up at Peter's house to recruit Spider-Man. Venom launches his large amount of inches at Spider-Man where MJ reacts faster than Spider-Man and takes a hit for Peter. I love how this guy's so moronic that he slows down the footage and still doesn't see what he's looking for. Like, I think Odin said it best. Even when you had two eyes, you'd see only half the picture. Like, if you slow down the cutscene, you can see that Peter does indeed react in time, he's just not focused on the attack, he's focusing on MJ's safety. Somehow, as Peter gets knocked into a fridge that falls on top of him and pins him. I've seen Cux try to argue that, oh, it's just those two seconds he was down for. But, no. They make an effort to show him get pinned for around 11 seconds, as could be shown by my timer. You know how he mentioned earlier that he's like the GOAT when it comes to Spider-Man research, yet he's gonna conveniently not l show the research that contradicts his points? It's shown in a phone call with Dr. Connors prior to this boss fight that Peter is suffering physically and mentally during the events of removing the symbiote from his body and getting anti-venom. Symptoms include muscle soreness and fatigue. Man, how are you feeling? Anxious? Panicked? I meant uh, physical symptoms. Soreness? Fatigue? Yes. Wait, symptoms? I've been looking through years of research. The symbiote channels a 
collective consciousness. That hive mind I was in. Was, is optimistic. May still be inside you. What? Nothing to panic about, but perhaps you should come to the lab for some tests. Can't, Doc. Bigger problems. Gotta go. Peter is undeniably weaker during these events, and it's under, like, but again, he's acting as though Peter couldn't lift the fridge. He's shown to be knocked unconscious or dazed for like 10 seconds. We see that when he eventually comes to, he tosses the fridge with virtually no issue, so hard that it cracks the wall behind him. Like, he tosses that shit like it's nothing. He didn't fail to lift it, he just got stunned for a couple of seconds, which again, is completely okay. He's not Kratos, it's fine for him to get his ass kicked every now and then. This character, then why would they take a guy who stops trains and blocks a punch from Rhino while fighting the Sinister Six, and then trap him under a fridge for 12 seconds as he watches his 2 out of 10 that the devs turned her into get ticked down? Funnily enough, because he was weaker after removing the symbiote, and also he doesn't watch this happen at all. Like, even in the footage you show, he's clearly stunned and dazed, and then when he eventually sees what Venom's doing, he tosses the fridge like it's nothing. Why are you just lying? Like the game's fan base, I guess the writers are really into being in the shoes of a cuck. This guy's giving Quantum TV a run for his money about how far he just cannot stand the fan base of a product and he's willing to insult them at any given turn. Like, just because we're willing to prove you wrong with facts and information, that doesn't justify you being a twat. She becomes a completely different character known as Scream, and after getting bitched at by her, he loses the scream in the end cutscene after the boss fight. I had some morons comment on my last video that uh, Peter didn't lose, but that's pretty much objectively wrong. Yeah, just like your entire video, funnily enough. But I would also like to point out that not only is Peter significantly weaker and not at all as at his base strength, however, he's also going to be holding back significantly more against MJ than any other typical criminal because it's the love of his life. And again, you mentioned earlier in the in your own video that symbiotes are a threat to Craven himself, a character significantly above Spider-Man as shown multiple times in the story. So Peter, whilst weakened and holding back more than he's ever done in his life, is still contending and holding his own and not getting knocked out against a symbiote tier character. By your own logic, Peter is not weakened. Peter is getting choked out by Scream until Mary Jane decides to let him go, and then MJ yells at Peter for him to do something so that she could release herself. This is a loss. By your logic, Miles vs. Peter was also a loss for Miles because he had to abuse his weakness and reason with Peter to try pull out a victory. Like, I don't see what the issue is here. This fight was the equivalent of that for Peter. He's getting his ass whooped, sure, but at the same time, he's not at all in a good physical state to fight with her, and he's holding back more than he's ever done in his life. And again, this is a symbiote tier character, as you said. This is still a really good feat for Peter, even if he doesn't necessarily win by pure physical force alone. But again, this is Spider-Man we're talking about. Remember in Spider-Man 2 how you love referencing other characters? characters, where Peter wins and saves the day, not by beating the shit out of Dr. Octavius, but by reasoning with him and convincing him, you know, to take back control of the arms. Like, it, I, I don't get why it's a problem. <laughs> Unlike Web of Shadows, once again, where Spider-Man gets to stay badass and beats a bunch of symbiotes and a black cat that got infected with the symbiote. Black Cat also gets her original design instead of just an existing character for no reason. But anyway, beyond a boss fight loss, Peter loses to regular lower tier symbiotes and gets fully infected again. In the same cutscene that you're showing, it's also shown that low tier symbiotes in enough quantity can even give Miles Morales tr difficulties. Like, both Spider-Men had to be saved by Mr. Negative. But I guess you're not gonna show that because it contradicts your point. <laughs> and Miles and Mr. Negative end up having to go into his mind and save him. And then he ends up getting the Anti-Venom Symbiote, which is a symbiote that gives him all the benefits of the regular symbiotes, except he has full control over himself. 
The anti-venom is actually really interesting because the suit is now part of Peter's biology, you know, it's bonded permanently to him, so you physically can't argue that Peter was nerfed now because he's stronger than ever and he can't physically remove the anti-venom suit. That's why I love these videos so much, because they completely ignore that, they're like, oh, it's a symbiote advance, uh. but no, it's literally part of his biology now. So you're implying that Anti-Venom is weaker than Spider-Man in the PS4 game, which I mean kick rocks if you think that. It also counters and cleanses the regular symbiotes from other people, which sounds great, right? Maybe he won't get folded by Venom anymore, oh uh, wait, he's still getting his ass kicked. Joker, be honest with me, what exactly did you expect was gonna happen here? Craven could already fight the symbiote-empowered version of Peter, and Venom killed Craven without much issue, and you're surprised that Venom can also whoop symbiote Peter's ass? Like, what exactly did you want to happen here? Could you imagine how boring this game's story would have been if this guy was writing it? Oh, Peter gets anti-Venom, immediately one-shots Venom, kills his best friend in the process, and then they all go out for shrama? Yeah, as said before, the way this is all being presented is making it quite clear that they don't like this character, as has been shown with many other examples throughout the game. They don't like the main character, apparently, even though he's literally the center of the story, all the characters are revolved around Peter Parker, and he has potentially the most growth out of any character in the game. And apparently Insomniac don't like him. With the exception of losing to Kraven, Miles has never been shown not holding his own throughout the game. Almost as if Miles is superior to base Spider-Man. I mean, it really isn't that far-fetched to believe. If you play the fucking Miles Morales game, you already know he wasn't far behind Peter in stats. Fast forward to the events of this game, where Miles is confirmed and shown to be much stronger and comparable to the symbiote-empowered versions of Peter. Why is it so hard to believe that one Spider-Man is stronger than the other? Just because the black one's stronger than the white one, that's not a problem. Whether it be him saving the day more than Peter can, or him not getting folded by Venom. Like, yeah, just because Venom kicks both of their asses at multiple points in the fight, that doesn't mean that Anti-Venoms can't still give Venom a good fight. Funnily enough, he's just cherry-picking the worst example and ignoring the others. The way Miles is competently being betrayed is how Peter should also be betrayed. At this rate, I'd have to say the nerfing of Peter is pretty much racially motivated, and that's coming from someone who isn't even white. The motivation for your entire video is pretty much racially motivated at this point. You don't like Kraven just because he's Russian, you ignore all the evidence in favour of him being as powerful as he is, and now you're essentially dissing Peter just because Miles is stronger than base Spider-Man. Like, I don't get what the problem is. I even have videos proving that symbiote Spider-Man at his peak is above Miles. So literally, what is your problem? It's just too much to be a coincidence. Miles is even more powerful than Peter Parker from a core gameplay perspective. Ah, he almost said an intelligent thing. He almost said that Miles is stronger than base Peter, but then he threw in gameplay as if it backs up his points, even though gameplay isn't canon. Ah, he, he came so close, guys. And then there's Mysterio with his uh, various missions in a bunch of challenge rooms, and you could only play them as Miles for some reason. Yeah, and who the fuck cares? There are some missions like the Howard mission where you can only play as it as Peter, I think. Like, there are some side missions where you can only play as Miles, some where you can only play as Peter, some where you can play as either Spider-Man. It's really not a problem, I don't see what the issue is here. Peter has already fought Mysterio in the past and has chemistry with him. At least I think he does, it's pretty much all off screen. What is the problem with having Miles interact with him? That's like saying, oh, it's trash that Miles interacts with Black Cat. Like, who cares? Not that it would matter because Miles was also better via the fact that he would clear the rooms faster, so therefore you'd want to play as him over Peter, even if you had the choice. I mean, it really depends on what enemies you're fighting. I mean, if you're playing as anti-venom, then you're obviously going to clear the room much faster going against symbiote opponents, as that's kind of his entire gimmick. I don't know, I guess it just depends on the context. Although, if I am going to be honest, I preferred playing as Miles over Peter when it came to the Miles Morales game versus the PS4 game. But that's just a personal preference, and again, gameplay is not canon, so it doesn't prove anything. I don't know, man. It seems pretty deliberate, doesn't it? But beyond that, one can say it's sexually motivated, and by sexually motivated I don't mean the slew of flags and geisha that doesn't belong in a game that a bunch of 8 year olds will play as a cover before. 
So I guess we can add homophobic to the list of to the list of offenses that this guy has shown. Seriously, it's a game set in New York in 2023. It would be less immersive if these elements weren't in the damn game to begin with. Like, what are you on about? Oh, gay people don't belong in my Spider-Man game. Like, he's become so detached from the actual premise of the argument that he's just going after various elements in the game that don't make sense. Also, just because these elements are in a game, that doesn't make it woke. Being woke is when these elements actively negatively affect the story, which they don't. Literally, all of these Ill elements are relegated to the open world. They don't affect the story at all. I mean, Rambo run and gun MJ who defeats hunters and symbiotes and breaks out of the symbiote on her own while Peter gets his ass kicked throughout everything that happens in the- MJ didn't break free from Scream's influence by herself. She needed the sound waves. Also, MJ is the most powerful character in the verse, don't at me. Yeah. I don't know why MJ is a part of these fight scenes when Venom can just one-shot her or take her hostage, but whatever. So you complain about MJ being overpowered, but then complain that she's a part of these boss fights? Almost as if she would be useful if she's overpowered? Even if you take away the personal connection that she has to Peter, Miles, and hell, even Harry, even though we haven't seen him much, like... I don't get what the problem is here. Like, that's like saying MJ being in the final battle of Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man 2, and hell, even the first part of Spider-Man 1. Like, that's saying that that's a problem, but it really isn't. Venom being defeated is a 2v1 win, or a 3v1 which somehow includes MJ. Yeah, funnily enough, when she has tech and equipment that poses a threat to symbiotes, as we see multiple times in the game, like, funnily enough, she would be useful. But you're acting- this guy's acting as though MJ 1v1 Venom and won. Like, no, she was on the sidelines throughout the entire fight, focusing on the technology with the Meteor. Like, Miles and Peter were the ones that fought Venom. Like, I don't get what the problem is here. I know I keep saying this, but seriously, he's making a mountain out of a molehill. I know Venom is as powerful as Spider-Man, if not more, but it's a part of Spider-Man's character that he usually always finds a way. How is using the anti-venom to purge the symbiote from Harry's system to find another way of countering, you know, the genetic terminal disorder that Harry's suffering from to save the world? How is that not finding a way to win? Sure, he had help when he was saved by Harry in Spider-Man 3, but Spider-Man 3 wasn't treating Spidey like a punk in that movie, unlike this overrated symbiote story. Uh, care to repeat that? Like, yeah, sure, he got his ass kicked at multiple points, but you said it yourself, Venom is as strong if not stronger than Spider-Man. I don't see why it's an issue. Spider-Man has red suit wins in that movie, such as beating a version of Harry, who is his proper character, and then had Sandman somewhat on the ropes in their first battle and caused Sandman to not be successful in his robbery attempt. Tobey Maguire is my favourite portrayal of Spider-Man of all time. However, even I'm not going to dick ride him just to try prove a false equivalency. Like, saying, oh, this version of Spider-Man does these sorts of things, therefore, Insomniac Spider-Man should also be capable of doing them. I can keep going when it comes to better examples. Even Tom Hall losing one fight to Mysterio and a bunch of drones he's never fought before is more excusable than the crap that happens in this game. How on earth does an alternate Spider-Man taking an L to a guy who has no superpowers and a bunch of robots, how does that equate to an alien that is able to take over the world? And also taking an L to a Russian hunter who can fodderize Sinister Six members? Oh, and also taking an L to a skyscraper-sized Sandman. Yeah, you know when I said false equivalencies? Sam Raimi once again where Doc Ock only beats him when he stops a train, whether it be the movie or the actual good video game version of Spider-Man 2. So it's okay for Doc Ock in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man games and media to beat a weakened Spider-Man, but it's not okay for the Insomniac villains to beat a weakened Spider-Man. What the fuck are you on about? <laughs> like, what the fuck is that double standard? 
Oh, yeah, uh, let's end off with another Spider-Man game with a better story. I'm gonna fast forward this segment where he basically mentions, oh, you know, Peter died to anti-venom in the, you know, Web of Shadows game, e therefore it makes it better than Insomniac's game, even though these are different interpretations of the character and also different, you know, events take place. Oh, and also the fact that, you know, time travel and all that alternate shit also happens, but... Sure, I guess, because one Spider-Man does a thing, the other Spider-Man should also be able to do it, right? Right? And he's a bad character because he can't do it? Like, let me ask you a question. Who do you think wins a fight between Toby, Tom, and Andrew's Spider-Man? Because unless you say, oh, they should all stalemate each other, you debunk your entire point. Like, these characters don't just stalemate each other. Like, inevitably one Spider-Man has to be above all the others. And the obvious answer is that the comic Spider-Man will always be the strongest, because there's shit that happens in the comics that you physically can't translate to the big screen or gaming without it being boring. So I don't see why we're having this discussion to begin with, like it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I went through every fight with Insomniac Spider-Man 2, and unless you want to count nameless thugs, it's the fact that he loses all the time. Except for the fact that he doesn't lose all the time, because you yourself admitted that he stalemated Rafe, so I guess by your own logic you're incorrect. Although seriously, shut up dude. I went through every single boss fight analyzing everything. Like, no you didn't. You missed several key details within the story and the game, and hell even the boss fights, that contradict your, no your notion. Like, dude, you're just too biased to give an objective review. Like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. You just portray yourself as well as being a very unlikable human being by shutting down people at any given chance just because they have a different opinion to you. There's a side mission where he fights Yuri, who becomes a light Punisher knockoff vigilante called Wraith, but that fight shows no conclusion and looks like more of a draw against a mere human somehow. Honestly, the seeds for this dog shit were planted a while ago. Not just with him losing a 1v1 to Rhino, but since their very first game where Spidey was taking mini L's to a mere human like Silver Sable. Peter wasn't going all out against Yuri since they have a past friendship together. Like seriously, do you think a regular human is going to pose any threat to Spider-Man at all? Two, it is shown consistently that Peter considers Rhino to be retroactively stronger than him, and he could have lose he could lose fights against Rhino if he's not on his game and if he's not ex exploiting his weaknesses. The reason why Peter took an L to Rhino in the Mars Morales game is because he tried squaring up to Rhino and going mono a mono against him, which obviously ended about as well as you'd expect against a character who is far stronger and more durable than you. Three, by saying that Peter had all of these L's in the PS4 game, you're essentially disagreeing with your own point that he was quote unquote nerfed, since by your own logic he was never strong to begin with because he's taking L's to like regular ass humans in the, P in the PS4 game, even though once again you're ignoring context for those because he's obviously not going to be going all out against regular freaking humans. Like if you want to try saying that Peter in the Insomniac games was never strong to begin with, go ahead I can't stop you, but your comment section is going to be flooded by people who think that this guy is the strongest Spider-Man we've ever seen. It sure has got a lot worse than the first game, but oh well. I could end the video honestly right here and then. By this guy's own logic, Peter is perfectly fine taking L's to peak humans in the first game, but he was nerfed in the second game because he takes L's to Russians and black people. Like, I'm fucking done. <laughs> At the end of the day, this video was as bad as I expected it to be. The guy did no research whatsoever. I honestly don't think he even played the freaking game. He's just taking things at face value, ignoring context, even though he claims to be looking into everything very extensively. He clearly has a very fragile ego as he's willing to shut down any disagreements whatsoever, calling people cucks and all this cringe shit that you see nowadays. So I honestly have no hope for the guy, I don't know where he's gonna go from here, as well as the fact that he apparently he tried debunking me in another video, which I don't know, if you guys want me to look at that one, maybe I will, but if it's as any, if it matches the quality of this video that I've looked at today, it's gonna be a pretty miserable experience for my mental decline. But honestly guys, what do you think of the video? If you want me to do more of these like debunk response videos, feel free to let me know in the future. I would give an outro, but honestly, I don't think it could match the quality of this guy's video.